Hello, uh, welcome to this tutorial um, for Lazy Docker. I've tried to sound very confident in my README, so hopefully in this demo I can kind of back up <laughs> my claims um, by showing some of the cool things that Lazy Docker can do. Um, so to start with, I've made a little test uh, like Docker Compose um, file that just has a few services. So there's the API, which is just a Rails uh, app, um, just with a single route. There's a MySQL database, a Redis um, container as well, and a quote fetcher uh, Golang microservice. So uh, basically, what happens is there's just a single controller called the quotes controller. You ask for a random quote, it obtains it from our uh, Go microservice, and then it stores it in the database, does an expensive operation for no good reason, and then returns you the quote. Um, so uh, let's see what that looks like. If I go curl on this guy, um, there we go, cool. Um, so it took a while because that expensive operation probably took a bit of time. Um, but uh, so because we're now we're, we're in the same file as this docker compose.yaml, so we can just go lazy docker and we are in. Um, so we've got our four services here. That percentage sign next to them is just telling us how much CPU is being used. Um, so for the API, MySQL doesn't have any logs yet, it seems. Um, a quote fetcher and a Redis. Uh, oh, there they are. Okay. Um, so let's start off by just showing. I'm in the wrong place here. I wanted that to be here. Lazy Docker. So if I do that curl command again, uh, you can see we've got these. Well, at first, there's a CPU bump, um, so it goes red when it goes to like 100 or so CPU. Um, and yeah, we've got some logging here as well, so it's pretty cool. Um, now, if you want to see that blip of CPU, we can look at the stats. So I've just changed um, the tab in this main view using, you can use the uh, left and right square brackets. That's probably subject to change, but I mean, it's comfortable for me right now, but if, if there's some Vim users who know a better way to, to kind of do that, where you don't need to move your fingers as far along the keyboard, I'm happy to change it. Um, so yeah, we can do another curl again, and we can probably see, we're gonna get another CPU spike here. And then also we've got uh, memory being plotted. Um, so in terms of these stat graphs, um, if you scroll below, and scrolling right now, it's just page up and page down, I think there's another key binding for that as well, but I forgot what it was. Um, you can basically look at any of these keys on this really big list of stats and you can um, configure a graph to show you what you want to see. So let's think of an example that might make sense. So if we go to networks, F0, we can look at the received bytes. I'm assuming that's what RX stands for. Um, so I'm assuming that that's attached to the top level. So we've got client stats there. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so there's client stats, which is just what the Docker service returns. And I've got another one called uh, derived stats, which is just some things that are like conveniently calculated, like percentages of things and so on. Um, uh, that's these guys here. But in terms of us trying to make a, um, a custom graph, um, let's copy this and we'll go to our config. So you can open this config up in the actual app. Just go to the status panel and then press, what is it? Uh, o, so I've just pressed X. In any panel you can just press X and you can see all the key bindings there. Um, so I'm going to open, oh, is that the right thing? Yes, no, yes, okay, in the right place. Although I prefer VS Code for now. Um, so I am going to add a new graph so it's under stats and then graphs. And I'm gonna make the color yellow. 
And this time I'm going to use client stats. And I think it was network. And you need to convert it from uh, camel case to Pascal case because, uh, yeah, it comes in JSON, but then we store it as a Golang struct, which is all Pascal case, which means like you capitalize the first letter. Um, but it was like network.f0.rxbytes, I think. Um, and we'll just call it bytes received. And let's see if we can boot this guy up again. Uh, I've set it as an alias for as a LD for convenience. Um, could not find key, client stats, network, F0, RX bytes. Did I get it wrong? Networks, F0, RX bytes. Okay, well, let's go back. Try again. Nice, cool. So now let's go and do this curl request. And looking good. Um, by default, it'll just, over the time it's been collecting the data, which will be from the time it st you start the program to uh, you can configure it. I think currently it just only collects five minutes worth of data. Um, from that time until right now, the minimum on this graph will just be whatever the lowest value was that was collected, and likewise, the highest is just the highest value. Um, you can constrain that by going min 0 max 100 and then go min type static and max type static. And the reason for doing that is because uh, this could be misinterpreted as a zero value. So because we're not using pointers, um, we want to specify that I really mean it, we want it to be setting it to zero. Um, but either way, that's pretty cool. Um, so this is just in the services panel. So we've got our logs, we've got uh, some config info. So I've kind of just got a bit of a formatted, semi-formatted um, uh, list of stuff here. But you, again, you can scroll down and just look at the entire object. And then there's also the top. So just the process is running on the, on the services container. Um, currently, I don't really support multiple containers per service. It, a lot of these things are just kind of like talking, just assuming there's just one container and then talking to that. Um, but I mean, down the line, we can probably change that. Um, so yeah, uh, other stuff you can do here, you, you can restart a service. So if I press R um, down the bottom left, you can see it's restarting. Um, and then, yep, you can see it printed that. Um, I can stop it with S. And then I can just boot that up again, or I could remove it. Um, so you would just press D and you can remove it. And maybe I want to restart it again. No containers to restart. Oh, fair enough. Uh, what you can do is go Shift R, and then you've got a few more options. So in this case, we want to actually recreate this guy because we removed the container. Cool. Um, what else? So these are the services, but then here we've also got standalone containers. So in my case, I wanted to have a um, container just for doing a bundle install. I'm not sure if this is good practice or not, but at least it's convenient for me because I can just go and restart this and then I'll just run the bundle install again. Um, likewise, you can put your uh, guard or migrations or whatever. Um, I'm from a, like a Rails background, so I know more about like what you'd be doing there, but there's probably other applications for that as well. Um, so here you can do, you can look through these different images um, I've got some nuns, which I think correspond to just intermediary uh, layers between different images, but hey, I don't really need them, so maybe I'll prune them. So you can go D, capital D, to prune unused images, and they're gone. Um, you can press uh, D to remove a given image, um, but I kind of like these, so I don't want to get rid of them because they're very large downloads, and I live in Australia. Um, then there's volumes, basically the same thing. You can remove them, you can prune them. Um, I'm not sure what these large um, shards are for either, but probably I don't need them, but I'm, eh, I don't really care right now. Um, so in the status panel, it just gives you the kind of status of the whole thing. Um, so yeah, you've just got the combined logs of everything, and then You've got your about page and the config of the Docker Compose. Um, it's worth mentioning 
this doesn't need to be using Docker Compose. Like you can use just regular Docker. So like if I, for example, um, just, I mean over here, I think, let's say that I went to my actual lazy Docker um, repo, because I was just an example repo, and I want to run it here. Um, because I'm not in the Docker Compose context, it will just forget about any concept of services and just go, well, I've got four running containers. Um, so I'll just show you those. And then if I look go up here, there's just an about section. There's no Docker Compose stuff there. So if you don't use Docker Compose, you can still basically use this and you'll get along fine. Um, okay, so what else is worth showing? Oh, you can attach to things. So, okay, let's say I go into my uh, Rails app here and I just go finding the pry, which is to set a breakpoint. Um, and then I do another curl, hit up the API, so it's like, okay, I've hit the breakpoint, now you press A to attach. So I've attached to it, you've got to hit enter just to kind of print out where you are again, because it won't print, it won't like retrospectively print things out, but I can go quote dot first, uh, puts quote dot first, puts blah, cool, and I just um, continue, and then you've got to go control PQ to escape. Um, Apparently that's configurable, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Now, there are some strange looking escape sequences here because uh, the GoQE library that I'm using doesn't perfectly deal with those yet. Um, but it's only really an issue for when you're doing interactive stuff. Otherwise the logs will come out just normally. Um, so I think that's basically it. Uh, yeah. But generally it's, it's like I've been using it personally to just kind of you know, at a glance, know what's going on with your containers, something crashes for no good reason, you can see it instantly, um, and then it's easy to restart it. And uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of you know, working with this stuff is just restarting things, making sure it's all running properly and looking at the logs. Um, but then also that we've got stats there, so if you want to go and dive a bit deeper into what's going on, you can do that. Um, but yeah, I'll probably finish recording and then remember something that I missed. But that is Lazy Docker in a nutshell. Thank you for watching.